everyone, hope you're all doing really well and welcome back to my YouTube channel. For those of you that are new here, I'm Becca, I'm a professional pet portrait and wildlife artist specialising in realistic coloured pencil drawings of animals. So in this YouTube video I thought I would do one about Patreon and it's kind of advantages and disadvantages for artists. I just wanted to talk really about whether Patreon is worth it for artists, my experience and how I found it really over the past year and a half. So what actually is Patreon then? So Patreon is basically a membership platform that provides business tools for content creators like us as artists. Um, and basically it's, it runs like a subscription service. So it helps artists earn a monthly income from providing exclusive content to their subscribers basically just by offering like whether that's tutorials or like um, rewards or different kind of perks to the subscribers. So how does Patreon work then? So I think it does help if you have like a ever growing or quite a big audience or number of followers on your social media anyway, because if you promote your new Patreon on your stories, for example, then you can kind of bring that audience over to your Patreon. Now that doesn't mean that every single follower that you have on Instagram is going to go over and be a patron and pay you every month. I think I found it very sort of up and down, but a gradual increase over the past year and a half. But obviously it does help having a larger social media following however if you're brand new to art or you're just wanting to start out i would maybe grow your social media a little bit more before starting patreon so that's how you can kind of get set up with your first few patrons by advertising it on your social media so how do you actually set up your patreon so basically you're going to need a profile picture a cover photo, I think it's good if you show examples of your work or examples of like tutorials or something that you're offering on Patreon already. Um, you're going to need a little kind of description about you and about the kind of tutorials and content that you're offering as well. And also it's nice if you do a bit of a welcome video kind of, you know, introducing yourself like this and talking about, um, again, what kind of content you're offering. So you want all of that to kind of represent you as an artist, represent your work, and you want everything to kind of show your brand, so really professional in terms of the colours and everything like that, really. So basically, you're just giving extra content to those most engaged members of your audience that want to see more from you, that want to learn from you, and just see some behind-the-scenes content as well. Then they're going to need to choose between three different tiers or more, depending on how you've set it up. So for example, I've got three tiers starting at £5, £10, £15. And basically the more that they pay the more content they get you can also give a brief description of what each tier includes so i think as long as you're giving like valuable content especially stuff that people can learn from i think people are willing to pay monthly to keep kind of coming back and learning from you how do you know how to price your tiers so what i did was research other artists that i really really like just seeing kind of what content they're putting out there at what price, like what price the tiers are, how many tiers they've got. So you could maybe join some of these artists' patrons and just see how it all works from the subscriber's point of view. Kind of put yourself in their shoes and see whether you feel like what you're paying for is, um, is worth it really, if you're getting that kind of content back. So then when you're setting up your Patreon, you'll have a bit more of an idea as to how much content and at what price you'll be offering in each tier. So what are the main benefits for us as the creatives, as the artists? So firstly, you'll get a monthly income, which might be low to start with, but it will grow. I've been doing this for a year and a half now. And when I first started, it was literally down here, but you've just got to be consistent with it and then it will go up. The second thing is no matter if you've got two patrons or 200 patrons, the time it takes you to create content each month will remain the same. The third benefit, probably one that I think is most important, is how rewarding it is as an artist. You feel like you've built an art community and people look up to you as a teacher, which is really, really rewarding. Also, when people follow along your tutorials and they send you the work that they've done, and you can actually see how much they've improved as a result of watching your tutorials and learning techniques, and just as a result of like your guidance and your teaching that you're giving them, that's really rewarding. You've also got to think that people have chosen you and your work to invest in to kind of accelerate their growth as an artist and that in itself is amazing really. So what are some of the disadvantages on Patreon for artists and what are some of the things to look out for? So the first thing is what I've mentioned before is that it's a long game. You've got to be really, really patient with it because it is, you know, steady, steady growth. The second thing is a lot of people will come and go. A lot of people will leave your Patreon every month and it's not necessarily because your content isn't good enough, 
Um, it might just be because they wanted to try something new for a month or the financial situations changed or they've simply just not got the time to sit and work through a tutorial or kind of interact with what you're putting out there on Patreon. The last thing is the kind of lack of community with each other. I think you as the artist feel that sense of community because you're talking to everyone one-on-one, -on -one, kind of welcoming them to your Patreon and, you know, doing like one-to-one -one, um, critiques or feedback and stuff like that. So you're always interacting with your patrons, but in terms of them interacting with each other, they don't necessarily have that. And I think a lot of people just want to feel part of something and like be part of a group. And especially for those people who join my Patreon who maybe aren't as experienced and they've joined to kind of get some top tips on different things. Um, I obviously can't be there 24 seven. So sometimes it does help if they can talk to each other because someone else might recommend something um, and help each other that way. So to kind of get around that, Patreon also has a feature where you can connect a Discord server. So it's basically like having a group chat where people can still talk when I'm not there. Um, so it's good in that sense, but that's not something that I've set up as of yet. I've created an Instagram account specifically for my Patreons so they can see each other's work from what I share on my stories. Um, and they can also see upcoming tutorials and be a bit more kind of interactive. You can also send um, pictures on the messenger part of Instagram, whereas on Patreon you can't. That's another thing that's a bit annoying about it. But yeah, they're probably the main three things that I'd say are a bit of a downfall about Patreon. They're not really bad, it's just something to consider. So the last part of this video is my opinion on Patreon and any last top tips. So first, probably the main one, I would say get prepared with your content months in advance. So if you're thinking of starting a Patreon, have an idea of what sort of content you're going to be wanting to put on it. So for example, if you're a pet portrait and wildlife artist like me, um, and you want to be doing sort of tutorials and that kind of thing, I'd get them recorded, edited and scheduled to post for like probably at least two months in advance. And that'll just help you adjust to kind of introducing Patreon into your kind of day-to-day -day work life because it does take up a lot of time and I think you'll soon figure out how long things take you to do. Um, so that brings me on to my next point, which is don't overcommit. I think it's better to offer less at a consistent and better quality than offer too much and realise that you can't keep up with it all each month. Um, I think maybe starting out I was a bit too adventurous. I thought I could do all these different things, um, use like all the features on Patreon, but you've got to think how long these things take you to do and when you kind of intertwining all of that with the work that you do day to day anyway. It's kind of adjusting to that, which is quite a difficult thing. So yeah, point two would be just to get everything prepared months in advance if you're thinking of starting a Patreon, just so you can kind of ease yourself into it a little bit more. The last top tip that I'd say is probably just market and advertise your Patreon as much as you can. So any new tutorials or any new content that you're putting on Patreon, maybe just show a little bit of a, a snippet of it on your Instagram story. So it might just persuade some of your followers from your Instagram to join your Patreon, you never know. So I hope you enjoyed my short video on whether Patreon is worth it for artists or not. Hopefully I've given you some good quality top tips and a bit of an insight into how I find it. So like I've said, I've been on Patreon for a year and a half now. For me, I think it definitely is the most rewarding platform as like an art tutor. So if you stayed till the end, thank you so much for watching. Please remember to like the video if you found it helpful and remember to subscribe to my channel if you want to see more art related videos and tutorials.